All right. So when you have a narcissistic family and a toxic family that you are a part of, you're going to play a role somewhere in this toxic family, right? You are often the scapegoat, the golden child, or some, you're some form of role that the narcissistic person has put you in. And the dynamic of that family, the dynamic and the control and the power that that family has over the roles everyone plays can operate in a way that feels like a narcissistic cult or a family cult. So what we mean by this when we say it is that it's a group of highly dysfunctional roles being played out within a family that has been orchestrated and conducted by what we might call the puppet master or the narcissistic usually parent the patriarch or the matriarch of the family who then everything operates based on that narcissistic person's delusional reality that they're creating for the family so they set the narrative for the family they determine how it will operate they control what happens they control who plays which part and if you take a moment and try and step out of your role if you grow and change if you find healing if you or if you take a turn and go a different direction and try and break out of the mold that they've set up for you, there's a multiple things that can happen. They can reject that and cast you out from the family, in which case they will smear you. They will attack from all fronts out externally so that they make your life really difficult everywhere else. They will not let you back in. They'll disinherit you. They will, um, it spread their venom into other people in the extended family and the extended circle of friends so that you are pushed out so far that you don't exist right well you do but it's like they have pushed you so far to the outside that you have no one okay another thing that can happen when you try to change the role is they push back they'll push you push and you set a boundary they'll push on your boundaries you set another boundary they'll push on those boundaries until you are still operating within the same dynamic of the same role that you were put in and you're the only one seeing that this is nonsense this isn't who you are this this you're being told you are something and if you try to break free from that you'll be gaslit they will project onto you and you will be put right back into that role the thing is that the whoever is setting up this system this cult-like behavior is a narcissistic person is a very toxic person is a person with a personality disorder okay and they control everybody's outcome because you know how it is when you're in a relationship with a narcissist it's all about the narcissist's world it's not about yours you don't exist you exist to feed supply to the narcissist and that is it so if there's any pushback toward this if there's any questioning of it if you question the rules the narcissistic person will set the rules that the household the family the operations when you're on your own outside the, the family but still how you're supposed to conduct your life all of it those rules are the narcissist rules and if you don't follow those rules there will be a punishment and that punishment is fairly punitive it's it's like i said it can be the shunning it can be the casting out it can be smearing gaslighting other forms of attacks i mean have you had this happen if you have what has happened with you how have they how has the narcissistic person systematically gotten everyone in the family to turn on you and what has happened when you tried to step out of your role and into the role of who you truly are in these families where it is to this degree the narcissistic person rules with an iron fist okay they are absolute total controlling basically family dictators right and there's often an enabler or a secondary sort of narcissistic person or a person that doesn't want to deal with it so to speak and so they because they, they don't want the attacks coming at them they enable and placate the narcissist that's usually the other spouse or the other spouse is trying desperately to protect everybody else and is pretending that the narcissistic person they're deflecting they're covering up for they are being they're doing their best to keep the peace in the family so you see what role that narcissist has placed them in the peacekeeper and the one to cover the tracks of the toxic behavior and what that does to the rest of the family is people see it children see it other other family members see it but then they see the 
the contrast of the enabling parent or the enabling partner. And they think it can't be that bad. They look happy. The whole family looks happy, right? So it gets very twisted and very confusing and very hard for anyone to explain what's going on in the family because you're seeing these roles play out and none of them make sense. None of they, I mean, they make sense if they work together when you see the whole system, but it doesn't align with what's being viewed on the outside. If you don't agree with the narcissist belief system, control system, way of operating, they will make it so that basically you're a threat. Okay, so they'll make it so that you are never seen as sane, healthy. Um, they'll do things like push you toward actions. I know I've talked to so many people who have um, turned to alcohol or drugs to escape the pain from this kind of thing. But then what happens because they were the scapegoat is now they've got something legitimate to be scapegoated for and not trusted for. Unfortunately, it becomes very difficult to reshape out of that to be recovering from any of these addictions and have the support well you don't have the support of the family the family needs you down right because they're toxic and when you try to lift yourself up they'll keep you down they will keep the words they'll use the the way they will continually talk about you as if you are still in that position and they won't let you back up to be a clean happy individual never no Unless, unless, wait, there might be a caveat, unless they're the ones who can make it look like they got you out of the situation, like they helped you heal. Like it's because of them that you are now the way you are and, and such a better person and so on and so forth, even though they're the ones that created the stress, which caused the problems you were having to begin with, right? The thing is, you'd think, you'd think it would be obvious and be easy to see. You'd think that if, that people would just wake up and be like, wait, I'm a pawn. I'm a, I'm getting, I'm like a puppet and she's pulling my strings or he's pulling my strings and I don't even have a thought of my own and I don't even know if I like my children because I don't even know who they are because this person next to me has told me who they are and so I never got to even know them as people and and the children might wake up and say why do I not like my brother or sister or why do I always pick on that one and no why does everyone always pick on that one I feel bad for them let's change that it can't get healthy in a toxic system when you continually have someone being toxic in the group. You, I, I have an analogy where I say it's a relationship's like a pot of soup, right? And every, every ingredient you put in creates what the soup becomes. When you have a toxic person in the relationship, they are putting toxicity, poison into the soup. So that relationship, no matter what, will always contain that toxic poison element. So you can't, get healthy as a family or as a group when you have this toxic leader, right? And even though we don't think my mother or my father is the leader, they really are pulling the strings. You see what happens when they're removed, everything falls apart. They're controlling it so much that people can't think for themselves. And it takes a lot to get out of these situations. And like, literally, it's like leaving a cult. You have to learn to think for yourself again. You have to be deprogrammed in your mind. And the brainwashing that's been put in there needs to be erased, right? Or at least modified so that you can see that it is brainwashing. And um, I always say in this situation, the sad truth is the scapegoat is usually the fortunate one. And that sounds really funny. But the reason is that they're the ones usually who see the injustice. They're the truth seers and the truth sayers. They are usually the ones who, um, even if they can't stand up for themselves, would stand up for someone else. They have usually the both the experience and the empathy to understand that to see what's happening. They, they, you know, of course, when you've had this happen over and over to you, you believe it's you, you believe you're the problem, even though you see it, but at least they have that state of cognitive dissonance, right, where they can see that it's not them, even though they believe that it is, you know, because of them, because that can be worked on that part can be reprogrammed and healed. What can't be fixed is when someone doesn't even see it or refuses to see it because they benefit from the family cult system, right, even if even if you are not born into this family, even if, for example, you marry into a family where there, where this is going on, where there is an ex extremely obvious toxic system going on, where you have one person controlling 
the dialogue, controlling the narrative, controlling the way everyone in the family sees and operates and functions and the things people like and dislike because of this one person, you will be pulled in and you will be placed in a role. You don't know what that role is until you're placed in it, right? If generally, if you are marrying or a partner of a male child of a narcissistic mother and you are a female, so you're a female partner, your, your husband or boyfriend is, um, has a narcissistic mother that's this type, that is this, this extreme controlling type that really conducts the way everyone thinks and behaves, you're going to most likely get placed in the role of some sort of scapegoat or some sort of, you're basically the evil woman that's taking their baby boy away. And because that means they lose control of that son. Now, remember, the narcissist doesn't view the son as a whole and healthy individual. They see the son as an extension of oneself, as an as a object, as an object to control, as an object to live a life that reflects their own life, right? So they're pulling strings on that son as well they'll place you in the role of probably some form of scapegoat that is trying to that is in direct competition with them and that's never a healthy fun place to be because you are then on the radar and you are the number one target in this family system of the narcissist all of a sudden it can even be so that they take their attention off the original scapegoat and place it onto you and then you are chased out you're you're lied about you are gaslit everyone is lied to about you so um say you uh say you were in college and you decided to take a semester off for whatever reason and you're going to go back okay that narcissist will tell everyone in the family oh they quit college because they're having personal problems they're just they're just quitters or they they don't have what it takes you know and so then even when you go back it they can either make it look like they forced you to go back or like oh yeah we'll see if this one sticks you see they they've already set the narrative in everyone else's head about you so this can happen so be careful <laughs> if you have a person you're with who has what you think are narcissistic parents and they are still enmeshed with and under the control of that narcissist. And especially when they're same gendered, like if you are a male and it's a narcissistic father, or if you're a female and it, that person has a narcissistic mother, be careful because then you are a direct threat to who, to the role they represent in that, in their child's life, right? Does that make sense? So it can be pretty bad. Have you guys ever experienced anything like that where you've, come into a family and suddenly you're placed in a role. I can't tell you how many people I talk to who this happens to. And it is so devastating because they don't have the direct familial um, uh, relationship, right? But they're married in and their entire married life is being triangulated because of an enmeshment with a toxic narcissistic parent. That's another video for another time, but it can happen. Okay, so just know that these family cult systems, these toxic narcissistic systems that go on because of a narcissistic parent or two narcissistic parents, right? Um, it causes a lot of problems. And all you can do, I think, is work on your own self through this and find your own way out. Don't try to save your siblings and your family members. Don't try to convince them. You can tell them, you can lead them to the information, but take care of you so that you can live a life independently and autonomously as you should when you grow up and become an adult, right? Um, and you can break the enmeshment for yourself and you can break the guilt and shame that they'll put on you because two of the major punishments that they use are guilt and shame. Those are the two major ways that they will control your mind is by creating guilt and shame in you. So you, you can heal those things, okay? And then get away from this toxic system, regardless of whether you go no contact or not. Uh, keeping it low contact 
Some people can do it and still be able to break free from this. So if you need any help with anything, check out the info in the description of every video. There are links there to reach me for coaching, group coaching, or for other support groups that Queen Being has to offer. So check it out, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. I am Lise Colucci, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.